drinks and trays. A pair of tens. At the two pair. Seven hundred. Beat them a full. There's your seven hundred. And raise your thousand. Or what? See the raise and find out. Come on, Nick, I'm tapped. Well, I'll take your marker. You got 3,000 worth of my markers already. Hey, listen. Play the hand or fold. What am I, the heart fund? back here by midnight. Where am I going to find that kind of dough? Go see Bernie. Now, with the bar exam only six weeks away, you're all entering the most critical phase of your review. Now, I can't stress sufficiently the need to cover this material again and again and again. It's like learning a language. You've got to keep cueing each other. Okay? Okay. Next Friday, we'll be reviewing corporate liabilities. Have a good night. May I help you? Yeah. For Mr. Carroll. Uh, is he expecting you? Would you tell him that Danny Kaplan needs to see him? It's important. Mr. Carroll, there's a Danny Kaplan here to see you. Would you like me to send him away? No, it's okay. Bring him over. Give me two minutes, okay? And go powder your nose or something. Hi, Mr. Carroll. You brought me my money. No, sir. You got the audacity to walk into my restaurant without bringing me the 3000 you owe me? I had it, Mr. Carroll. I, I swear I did, but uh, I got into a hell of a jam, you know, and I, I didn't want to snow you, so I figured I'd just come in here and uh, explain my situation. And... Nick Peltz's card game, right? How much? The three I owed you plus four G's more. In which, if you don't come up with it, Peltz will put your hands in the garbage disposal, right? If I'm lucky. Mr. Carroll, uh, I was wondering if, uh, if, 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 if you could hold back on, on a three G's for an extra week and advance me four G's more, and that way I could straighten out this, this mess that I'm in, and I could, uh, square my account with you. What do you say? What do I say? I say you get the dough someplace else. What do you got, a kid brother, he's a lawyer or something? You get it from him. Hey, come on. He's driving a hack to put himself through law school, Mr. Carroll. You know that. You don't have two nickels you can rub together. It ain't my problem. Hey. Hey, look. I'm begging you. You're the only one I can talk to. The answer is no. Now get out of my restaurant. You're sending me out there to get killed. My condolences in advance. You filthy crumb! Oh, God. I'm sorry. Uh, here, here. I didn't mean it. Let me help you. That was a terrible mistake. You know, you might even say that was an important mistake. Get him out of here. No! No! You believe this? Who man of the world? Not unattractive by any means. 
On a Friday night at 11 o'clock, and where are we? At the Macambo? With two uh, sultry, satin swath beauties. Or on a private jet winging to Vegas for a night out in the town. Au contraire, mon cher frère. Here we sit, eating corned beef out of a paper bag, holding the mayo, studying like two crazed jerkos for a bar exam, which yours truly has already flunked twice. And well, the third time, if you don't shut up and answer the question. All right. Hit me again. Will you pay attention? Go ahead. A smith waited for a taxi. He noticed two large jewels in the gutter. Ah. Smith picked them up and put them in his pocket. Pick them up. Intending at that time to give them to his daughter. Aha. In his apartment building, Smith met Jones, a neighbor, and showed him the stones. That's Miss Jones. Sold the stones. The next day, the papers headlined a story about Mrs. Fish having lost the jewels. Mrs. Fish. Later that day, Jones came to Smith and said, give me one of those stones or I will turn you in as a thief. Smith gave him one. Explain what crimes, if any, Smith and Jones have committed. Smith finds the stones. Jones wants the stones. Smith gives Jones the stones, which belong to Fish. This is Fish. OK. <clears throat> crimes committed are as follows. Larceny. Extortion. Accessory after the fact. Good. And receipt of stolen property. When the jewels were in the gutter, they were in the constructive possession of Mrs. Fish, the rightful owner who lost them. When Smith found the jewels, he had intentions of... Ah. Uh -huh. Our jet is ready. Hello? Hey, Kaplan? Come down to 4th and Cornell, the alleyway behind the restaurant. Pick up your garbage. Obscene phone call. Del, you mind giving me a ride? Calling for an ambulance. Danny. Danny, who did it? Bertie. Carl. Was it professional? Expert. Then he'll be all right. If you don't nail Carol for this, I will. All right, now take it easy. Go to the hospital. Yeah, I'm going. But you tell that bum for me that this isn't finished. Now, just remember who you are, where you come from, and what you're reaching for, and how easy it would be to blow 12 years of work. Yeah, OK, OK, I'm cool. The hell you are. Really, I am. All right, go on. Shots me. I'll meet you at the hospital. Please. Come on. Talk to Bernie Carroll. For what? Danny Kaplan is a compulsive gambler. Yeah, yeah, He's found yeah. in an alley outside a restaurant owned by one of the biggest loan sharks in this city. You figure it out. Yeah, so for this, you're going to climb his tree because he'd be up. Freddie Freddy and I go back a long way. I know him. I know what he's capable of. If I don't shake Carroll's tree, he will. Yeah, I just want to thank you for waking me up in the middle of the night for something like this. Complaining. I'll it complain. I'll complain all I want. want. Uh, gentlemen, sorry, the restaurant's closed. Where's Bernie? Uh, he's in the back with the two lifeguards. Okay, but thank you. No, no, you just... Hi, Bernie. Don't tell me, cops. Looks like he was expecting us. Mm. Two clutches walk in with windbreakers and a bulge on the hip. What else would he be? <laughs> <laughs> you think that's funny, huh? What he just said? Huh? All right, now get over there. Against hey, the table. what is it with you, John? I'm talking about the cans against the table. You got a complaint against you, Bernie. Oh, yeah? From who? Danny Kaplan. What's a Danny Kaplan? Oh, just a guy who got tossed like a salad in your alley about an hour ago. Terrible places, alleys. I hope this guy feels better soon. Yeah, I hope so, too, because when he does, he's going to sign a statement fingering you, and I'm going to be back here and bust your hiney. Listen, I never heard of this guy. I've been in my bar all night. Ask anybody in the joint. What did he do to get you so flexed? Stop a little goo on your sleeve? For that, you break ribs, huh? Hey, hot dog, I don't have to take this stuff. You want to make a bust? Make a bust. My lawyer have me out in an hour, and then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to have your shield in my trophy room 20 minutes later. Who do you think you are coming into my place like a couple of cowboys and embarrassing me? Guys like you, Bernie. Guys like you who have gotten by on a pass in this town for 20 years, they get a little sloppy. They make little mistakes, dumb mistakes. You made one tonight when you had these curb stompers jump on Danny Kaplan. I'm going to make you eat that mistake. Come on, Shots. What can I tell you? 
He's crazy. Thinks he's Crusader Rabbit. I can't control him. Dr. Michaels, call extension 255. It's right there. Dr. Michaels, call extension 255. Ready. He died on me, Del. He wasn't supposed to, but he died. Oh, God. It was 11 o'clock on a Friday night. Now, somebody here must have seen that fight. There were 12 units. Forget the ones that face the front. Johns and I will take this side. You guys take that side, OK? Yeah, let's do it. <sighs> Morning, Sergeant Del Vecchio. This is Detective Shansky. I already gave it the office. We just want to ask you a couple of questions. Okay. You make it fast, huh? Does your bedroom window overlook the alley? Yeah. Want to have to take a look? Go ahead. Holy mackerel! What do they do? Cut off your electric? Either that or a. Uh... Prayer breakfast. You guys got nothing on me. Neither do you, hardly. Chance, look. Look, ask what you're gonna ask and get out, huh? Why, you expecting company? None of your business. Now, look, we're not trying to unionize you or anything. We just want some information. You had me home last night? What? There was a slight altercation outside your window about 11 o'clock. Since you got a season ticket here, we thought you might have seen it. Listen, if I ran to the window, every time I heard some kind of beef out there, I'd make tracks on the carpets. So you were home, huh? I don't remember. Well, maybe I could freshen your memory up by taking you down to the station. Wait a minute, Charles, wait. Now look, this is not your garden variety Friday night punch-up we're talking about. We're talking about a murder here. Look, let's quit playing games, huh? I know what you are. You know what I am, OK? You want the truth? I was entertaining a gentleman last night. A regular working girl. What are you gonna do, haul me and meet Paul? You got no cause, you got no warrant, you got no witnesses. It's after the fact. Everybody's a lawyer these days. Now look, miss, there was a murder here last night, a noisy one. And if you didn't see it, maybe a John did, hmm? Goodbye. I've answered all the questions I'm going to answer. Look, just the name of your John. Smith. They're all named Smith. It's a big family. You live across the alley from uh, Bernie Carroll's restaurant. So? So Bernie's a scary man. I can understand how you might be afraid to say something that might offend him. I already told you I didn't see anything last night. I was otherwise occupied. Hey, John. What do you say we just hang around here for a while, sort of discourage business, huh? Who's your talent agent? Oh, you've got to be kidding. No, simple question. Look, if you're going to drag me in, drag me in. I'd rather spend a day in the tank than a month in the hospital. I see your point. What do you got? Well, I got one old lady who's deaf, another whose apartment is empty, and a third who was out till two in the morning. Mm. You got anything? Yeah, we got one live one, but she's not talking. You know, maybe she didn't see anything. It's possible, you know. Sure. With her, it's an every-night occurrence. But just think, you're the John, right? You're nervous being there to begin with, and suddenly the battle of the bows takes place outside the window. I can see where that might have a sobering effect. Mm-hmm. To say the least. And ten to one, that's exactly what happened. Did you get the name off the uh, mailbox? Yeah. Lily McKenzie. Uh, capital M, small c, large. Like Sean, why don't you go on and run a make on it? Maybe she's got a sheet we can get the name of the pimp. So we get the pimp, and he gives us the name of the John. And we get a statement from the John, and we arrest Bernie Carroll, and we all live happily ever after, huh? <laughs> you make it sound easy, but not everybody. Just drive. 
Ah. Okay, we're cool. You got it? Yeah? Pull over right there. That's a buck. Give me some change. Speak to Mr. Carroll. Tell him to stand the man. Hmm? Important. Hello, Mr. Carroll. Stand the man. Now look it. I just thought you ought to know. I heard on the street that Danny Kaplan's kid brother just bought a piece. Now, the thing of it is, he's uh, mouthing off about going head hunting. And I figured with what happened last night, maybe you ought to know. Wait a minute. You, you don't know that me and my people had anything to do with that last night. No, I'm not saying that anyone says that you or any of your people had anything to do with it. I'm just letting you know what's out on the vine. That's all. Appreciate the call, Stan. I owe you one, right? Shots. Did you want to make a Lily, uh, what's her name? Uh, Lily, what's her name? A.K.A. Lily McKenzie. A.K.A. Lily Saunders. A.K.A. Lily London. A woman with a definite identity crisis, I see. Half a dozen counts of soliciting. No arrests in the last 18 months. Any tie-in to her pimp or uh, Bernie Carroll? No, zero. You find Freddy? No. I checked the cab company. He's working. The day after his brother died. Yeah. He's gonna do something stupid. I can feel it. Ah, no. It'll be all right. It just takes a little time, that's all. Don't hold your breath. We gotta get a tie-in on that, uh, John. If she hasn't had a bust in over a year, it means she's not making any money transactions. Which means the pimp keeps the books. Tom, phone. Take a message, will you? Ah, uh, I think you want this one. It's Bernie Carroll. What do you want? Don't tell me you're calling to apologize. <laughs> Listen, wise guy. You're so concerned about everybody's welfare that I thought you ought to know that Mayan is being threatened. Oh, yeah? By whom? That crazy Kaplan person's running around threatening to kill me. You got that? What? Where'd you hear that? Come on, Del Vecchio. I got people in the street, too, you know. The word's out. He bought a piece. And if that loony comes anywhere near me with a loaded gun, I'm going to blow his head off in self-defense. Bye, Del Vecchio. Ah, bad news. I gotta get to Freddy before he gets the burning. Oh, shots. Take Robbie and hit the streets, would you? We gotta find out who Lily's pimp is and get him in here fast. No, I, I, I just told you. Find it! Him. Robbie! Transfer out of ice. Well, it was hard work, my love. I couldn't sleep at night. Who well, can? Listen, darling, I need some information. Oh, gee. You know, I thought this was just a social call. No, no, no. Look, you know Lily McKenzie? Tall, graduate of Gutter University about 18 months ago? Yeah. Well, I need to know the name of her old man. Oh, no way. Listen, it's cold and scary out here, and if I give you a name, it comes back to me. My parts get rearranged. I don't look good in a body cast. Look, I promise. All you have to do is point him out. You'll never know where it came from. Well, what's in it for me? I'll talk to Snyder and Vice. He owes me one. Next time he sweeps the streets, you get a free pass. I don't have a cross, you know. You eyeball him from afar. I don't move to you, you're gone. Deal? OK. Hi. Can I come in? Sure.
How you feeling? How am I supposed to feel? I just stopped by to let you know that we're starting to get a line on a witness. If you hang tight a little while longer, I think we can nail Bernie good. You figure, huh? Yeah, I figure. What are you looking for? A mistake. A mistake that I think anyone's entitled to make. Where is it? Where's what? The piece you bought. Where have you got it stashed? I don't have a piece. Look, Freddy, I didn't come here as a cop. I came here as a friend to try to prevent another friend from flushing 12 years of hard work down the toilet. Take your hands off me! I don't have a piece, and you don't have a warrant. Where is it? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you don't, huh? What do I have to do, talk to you like a baby? Do you know what a split second of satisfaction is going to do to your law career? The law. Don't talk to me about the law. The law is an accessory after the fact. It protects Bernie Carroll while he has my brother beaten to death. You bed down with rats, you wind up poison. Danny wasn't exactly an altar boy, you know? He was my brother. Look, Freddy, there's a right way of doing this. Going off on a half-baked vendetta, isn't it? What I do is my business. Well, I'm making it mine. Freddy, give me the piece. We got nothing more to talk about. You want to play it that way? OK, you got it. Dell. Dell, I'm warning you. Dell, get out of here. Oh. Dell, I'm sorry. I. Assaulting a police officer, you're under arrest. What are you doing? Get serious. All right, shut up. You? Put your hands behind your back. Cut it out. I said shut up. Where's the phone? I have a right to an attorney. Clocky, let him use your phone. Only if it's local. All right, go ahead. Smitty, how are we doing in the tank? I think we got room for one more. Yeah, well, I don't. I think maybe we ought to transfer him down to county. Why do we do a thing like that? Just call Santini down there, would you please? Tell him to do it as a favor for me. OK, by me, but you better do the paperwork so I can send it along with him. No paperwork. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I'll do it later. It'll catch up to him. Just call Santini and tell him to put him on the tour down yeah. there. Yeah. Now, don't give me that look. Just tell Santini to lose him down there, keep him lost, until I tell him different, OK? <laughs> Excuse me, gentlemen. I hate to break up a delicate negotiation, but you're both under arrest. Arrest? Lily McKenzie. Yeah, what about her? She's one of your fillies. Yes or no? They ain't saying yes. They ain't saying no. Look, Wally, we've already made our arrest quota for the week. Now, all we need to know is the name of her John last night between the hours of 11 and 12. What's so difficult? You give us the name, you're out of here by dinner time. Hey, deal me out, huh? Look, you want to book me? Book me. You're afraid of Bernie Carroll? Hey, man. I do business out there courtesy of Bernie Carroll. Business? You're concerned about business? Well, let me tell you about business. You will have no business if I get on your case. You don't help us, and I will personally go on a campaign to drive you off the streets forever. You won't be able to make a move without me on your butt. Now, am I coming across to you, Wally? Shans. Don't shans me! Don't you get to shoot with me, man. You walk out of here, and I'll put the word out in the street that you turned on Bernie Carroll. Now, how do you like them apples, Wally? No, no, you wait. Now, shut up! Now, Wally, I got you. I got you either way. I got you dead! Bang! Jesus! Bang, Wally! Sean, screw it down! Don't tell me to cool down! We got a murder case on our hands! And this creep is talking to me about his business! Sean, 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 Sean,
and then you can control yourself. You stupid son of a bitch! I said get out of here, now I mean it! Get out! Come on, get out of here! Some scary cat. It wasn't kidding, was he? he? Takes his job too seriously sometimes. He loses perspective. Yeah. Well, look, man, uh, Benny Carroll has that same tendency. You know what I mean? Look, Wally, it's a cruel world out there. If I were you, I'd find another way. Shans is crazy. He's really crazy. He is crazy. For me? Yeah, I'll cover you. Let me see. Friday, Friday, Friday. Eleven o'clock. Uh oh. What's the matter? Yeah, this dude stayed at the Aldridge Motel. You no, know, the uh, bellman over there, he called me up and said that this cat was looking for a, a good time. Yeah, so? Well, the way we work is that uh, I call up the guy, we settle on the price, he pays the bellman, and the bellman leads him to Lily's place. I never got his name. Well, you called him, didn't you? Who did you ask for? Just the room number, 302. 302 Eldridge Hotel. Can I go now? Yeah, go ahead. Ah, here you uh, Tell your partner to lay off, huh? Yeah, I'll do my best. Room 302 Eldridge Hotel. Let's go up to the photo and pull a couple of snaps of Brain's gorillas. I'm Jean Lazarus of the PD's office. I'm representing Frederick Kaplan. I'd like to see him. Kaplan? Right, with a K. Frederick. Do you have a hearing problem, Sergeant? Let me check the roster. Just a second. What's the hang-up, Sergeant? He's only been here maybe half an hour or so. Oh, that Kaplan. Where is he? Well, the thing of it is, it's, uh... uh what is uh, the thing of it, Sergeant? He's not here. Where is he? I don't know. Maybe County could, uh... County? What's he doing down there? Let me see his booking slip. I don't have it. Uh, maybe it was sent to the DA by mistake. Give me the phone. <laughs> Yeah, this is Lazarus of the PD's office. Who's on the complaint desk? Yeah, let me have him. Yeah, this is Lazarus of the PD's office. I've got a client by the name of Frederick Kaplan. Did the complaint reach your desk? Yes, that's Kaplan with a K. It didn't? Thanks. I am being yanked around pretty good, Sergeant, and I don't like it. I've got a nose for this sort of thing, and I detect the distinct aroma of the fast shuffle here. Now, I'm going to go down to county to fetch my client. And I hope you're not entertaining any notions of picking up the horn and making any funny phone calls. Because if I do not find my guy, if I, in fact, dig out that there is collusion here, and I warn you, when it comes to digging, I'm a groundhog, then I will go through the ranks of this precinct like an ill wind, starting with you. And you'll be lucky if you can hook on at the Benet Brith as a night watchman. Help you, gentlemen? Yeah, we'd like to know the name of the occupant in room 302. Oh, in just a moment. 
the occupant's name is Henry Chambers. How long has he been at the hotel? Since Thursday, he's with the Western Regional Sales Convention. Okay, thank you. Oh, you won't find him in his room. Oh, well, where is he? Well, a group of them went out this afternoon, sightseeing. Do you know when they'll be back? Well, there's a business meeting in the garden room this evening. Should be back in time for dinner. Yeah. Would you call me at this number just as soon as he comes in? It's important. There isn't any problem. No, we just want to talk to him. You'll call me? Certainly. Okay. Alecchio, in here. Now! So you're Sergeant Dominic Del Vecchio. Sounds like an accusation. Who are you? Gene Lazarus. This lady is from the public defender's office. Freddie Kaplan's lawyer. Oh, that Gene Lazarus. You know, you're really something, Del Vecchio. You go into my client's home without a warrant, you toss the premises illegally. You provoke him, then when he finally takes a poke at you, you haul him in for assaulting a police officer. Do you then read him his rights? No. Do you then book him? No. In fact, you do none of these things. What you do do is you take it upon yourself to put him on the tour. You may get away with that some places, Del Vecchio, but that does not go down with me. I'm gonna cream you on this one. Sergeant, huh? I confess. Well, then pick up the phone and have my client released. No, not yet. What do you mean, not yet? Excuse me, sir, but I've known Freddie Kaplan for 20 years. He is a fighter. He has a temper. I put him on ice to prevent a disaster. We're not licensed to practice preventive medicine. Lieutenant, you put Freddie Kaplan back out on the street before I have a chance to make a case against Bernie Carroll and he'll blow a law career that he's been working on for 12 years. Maybe he doesn't deserve to be a lawyer. Did you ever think of that? Look, I made a judgment call. I think it was the right one. What are you? Some sort of a benevolent despot who unilaterally makes decisions for the greater good? It's men like you who scare me, Sergeant. You break the law, then you hide behind the shield that's supposed to uphold it. I violated his civil rights to save his life. You want my shield for it? You got it. You know nothing about civil rights. Don't talk to me about it. Counselor, counselor, could you wait outside a minute? No, I cannot wait outside. I'm through waiting. I want him to cough up my client. Please, huh? Wait on, sir. A real charmer, isn't she? You know, her anger is not without justification. You'll have to play fast and loose with this thing. It's been done before. Yeah, I know it has. I may have done it myself a few times. Yeah, for the greater good, huh? Don't give me with the lips. Look, you're up to your dimples in this one, and if you want me in your corner, you're gonna have to give me something I can hang my hat on. All right. He had a gun. If I hadn't busted him, he would've used it. Oh, then you have found this weapon. No. In other words, it may not exist at all. Bernie Carroll would not have called me about it if it wasn't true. Well, on the strength of this model, citizen, you went out and roused Freddy Kaplan without a warrant. Well, what am I supposed to do? Wait until he takes a pot shot at Bernie first? Maybe get himself killed just to save my own backside? You know, you're missing a point. Which should be as obvious to you as the nose on your face, and that is that I don't give a rat's toenail about Freddy Kaplan. I am, however, worried mightily about that lady lawyer out there from the PD's office who wants what's left of my scalp on a sphere. Will you stop worrying about your image? She'll cool down when we let Freddy out. Vecchio, don't you understand? The legal profession doesn't like us. Lawyers are to policemen as a mongoose is to a cobra, natural enemies. I don't want to give that lady out there a cause that she can use to sling mud at us with. So you get on your phone and you call downtown to county and you get them to spring this guy now. Lieutenant, all I want is 24 hours more. This point is not negotiable. Do it. Okay. Jerry, Dominic, look, that Kaplan kid, I appreciate what you did for me, but let the pigeon fly. Yeah, like now. He'll be out by the time you get down there. What do you want, a medal or something? This isn't finished, Sergeant. If Freddie Kaplan doesn't press charges against you, I may. Good, run away, thanks. Our right, John just returned to the hotel. Come on. Look, sir, we wouldn't be bothering you if it wasn't important. Well, I can't help you. 
Mr. Chambers, where are you from? Seattle. Well, look, nobody's making a moral judgment here. You want a little companionship while you're away from home? That's up to you. We just want to know if you heard or saw anything while you were with the lady. I was alone in my room the whole evening. A man was brutally beaten outside the lady's apartment in the alley about 11 o'clock. He died less than an hour later. And without a witness, we can't touch the men who did it. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, Mr. Chambers, we're not trying to embarrass you or anything. We just want you to identify a couple of men. Look, sir, we're just trying to solve a murder case. That's all. This is small potatoes. It'll never hit the papers here, let alone Seattle. You did see it, didn't you? Yes. Do you think you could identify the men that did it? I couldn't sleep all night thinking about it. Mr. Chambers. Are these the two men you saw? Yes. You sure about that? Positive. OK. You come down to the station, OK? You make a statement, we'll all sleep better tonight. I'll get my coat. Listen, while he's making a statement, you take Rivera and pull in those two guys. I gotta find Freddy before it's too late. 4420, wake up! Hey, Captain, what happened? You missed your shift. Yeah, I know. I got hung up. Well, I have to put Harris in the spot. You wanna take his shift? Sure. Okay, your buggy's all gassed up. 4420, 4420, get off that code 7. Yellow cab. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, about 15 minutes. A murder. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to an attorney. Anything you say may be held against you in a court of law. Let's go. Okay, go with me. Don't make trouble. I'll have the attorneys downtown in an hour. Two at the most. Go ahead. on Frederick Kaplan, driving cab license number 92685Q, as in Quickie. That's funny. <laughs> oh, it's always nice to have you, Mr. and Mrs. McKay. Wow, thank you very much. Don't be such a stranger. Good night, now. He's gone. When did he leave? Five, ten minutes ago. Did he say where he was going? I think he had a meeting to attend. Wait a minute, wait a minute. At this time of night? He went home. Wait. Did anyone come looking for him? No, no one. What's his home address? 6834 Gardenia Drive. units immediately at 6834 Gardenia Drive. Your hands on top of the car. Now move. Okay, turn around. Turn around.
Place looks deserted, Sergeant. Maybe, maybe not. I'm going in. Freeze it right there, Freddy. Drop that. You just couldn't listen to me, could you? You had to go do it, right? I made my case. I had the guys. They would have turned over on Bernie for sure. Why? I had him, Dell. I had him. What? I just couldn't throw away my life on that puke. Believe this? Look at me. I'm shaking like a leaf, me. He could have killed me. By the time I get through with you, Bernie, you're gonna wish he had. Come on, stupid, let's go. You gonna nail me on the gun? Gun? What gun? I didn't see any gun. Did you have a gun? Of course not. Nice, hard-working, soon-to-be lawyer like yourself. What would you be doing with a gun? Don't switch that remote. Coming up next, Jan Michael Benson stars as chopper pilot cellist Stringfellow Hawk in Airwolf, right here in TV Land.